Hello again. The reason why I'm wearing this mask is not because I'm afraid, but because I am not important. This is the second video, episode two of No One Unscripted. I wanted to say hello to everybody and clarify a few things that I kind of faux pas last time. Yes, so the first video with a gas mask was not a good idea because no one could really understand what was happening. Of all the 10 people who watched the video, one said that they thought it was an advertisement or something, which well, I suppose it could be, but it's not. It was just me rambling on with a train of thought, which I thought would be relevant to what we are dealing with in the world today. Anyway, so I wanted to clear up a few things from the last, the last little chat I had with myself and you. And that was, I'd spoken uh, about authoritarianism and I kind of drew a blank when it came to Africa and I feel really ignorant about that and I am ignorant about that. But one of the countries that's kind of important for us to look at in Africa at the moment is Zimbabwe, which was under authoritarian rule for about 30 years under Mugabe. And um, because of various reasons geopolitically as well as because of the climate crisis and the drought that's happening all around the world. Zimbabwe, which is a landlocked country, has uh, descended into sort of this hell where a, major, a large section of the country is now food insecure. And um, there are many reasons for it. And I, I, I think that climate is definitely one of them, but uh, authoritarianism had a, had a role to play in it. So there goes that. Uh, second uh, is that I said that the population between India, China, and the United States was about 50% of the world population. It's not. It's about 40. But that's still kind of a lot, you know. Uh, the third thing I wanted to clarify was I couldn't think of any women authoritarian um, leaders in our history. And then I sort of thought, thought about it and uh, there we had Margaret Thatcher in England and we had Indira Gandhi in India who some have considered to be, um, I guess, authoritarian if you, if you, if you sort of name them the Iron Ladies respectively, of United Kingdom and uh, India. So, um, yeah, they were there. And then there was Cleopatra and Victoria and Queen Elizabeth I. And, but they weren't authoritarian, I don't think. I think they, um, for the most part, made the world bigger, better, more inclusive, uh, more peaceful. So... Yeah, I stand by what I said in the last uh, little rant I had. Today, I'd like to go to the second. Uh, the second to make it easy, alphabetically, it'll be B. I wanted to talk about a few things. Uh, one of them is the human brain. So, the human brain is an incredibly complex I guess, organ in our body, incredibly complex system, incredibly complex machine. Um, it is so complex, to give you context, in the um, mid-90s, the United States government started the Human Genome Project, which was um, a project of academics and the government to be able to map our DNA. We finished that early, early in the 21st century, and... Um, you know, completing the Human Genome Project has had these amazing and sometimes dangerous and controversial impacts on our lives, like gene editing and genetic and mo genetically modified plants and being able to understand our genetics far more, uh, to be able to treat uh, genetic disorders. I mean, the, the, the applications of the Human Genome Project are infinite. But 
the point of me saying that is that it was a, an incredibly complex project that took over 10 years and the United States government uh, chose to do that project because they found it to be simpler than to do the human brain mapping project, which happens to be a project that the Obama administration started and I believe we were somewhere in the middle of it, and I, I kind of lost track of what was happening with everything. Uh, so if any more news comes of the human G, uh, human brain uh, mapping project, I'll be you know I'll be talking about it. But I mean that's how complex the brain is. That you know our government decided that mapping our DNA was probably going to be a simpler and easier and, and a, a more prudent thing to do than to go straight for mapping the brain. Which, it, I mean, it's, it's incredibly complex. I mean, if you, if you, if you have a brain, which well, I, hope, I hope you do, um, you know, rhetorically, because physically you obviously do, then uh, you'd be able to understand that that each single brain is its own universe, you know? And the way that we think, the things that we soak in, the things that we block out, the things that we... Uh, it's everything, everything around us. Everything around us, with the exception of nature and planets and stars, it's, it's a construction either of something that we have uh, constructed from having thought it up or something that we have created by just thinking it up, like philosophies and mythologies and ideologies. Um, that's what drives us. That's what drives... And, you know, for better or for worse, that has driven the world. We, uh, we have been given this amazing thing that we can't fully fathom yet. And so many of us, so many of us choose to not think choose to not use the brain, choose to not ponder anything more than what they have to do every single day. I think that's more of a, you know, it's a commentary both on what we are missing out on um, and also a commentary on what our human condition is today, that we really can't sit and think about anything else other than how to fend for ourselves, which is pathetic, which is sad. Uh, you know, we are we are in the most advanced time in human history. We have reached and surpassed so many hurdles, uh, and we still have not been able to confront our ourselves, our brains, our our you know our own insecurities, and I think that's. I think that's telling. So as we, as I wanted to, I wanted to go from that how we have limited ourselves. Excuse me. Um, to kind of a train of thought with another B, which is black. Uh, and I will, I will come back to black to racism, uh, a lot because it's, and prejudice a lot, because it's important. Black, black, black. So all, um, I, I grew up for part of my life in India and a part of my life in the United States. And the word black and the implications of black are, are varied, you know. In India, uh, what happens when you, um, what has traditionally happened is the, at least in, in uh, most of India, not the southern part of India, because uh, the southern part of India, Indians are genetically darker. Um, but in the northern part of India, the part that is more um, uh, sort of has a Caucasian and um, sort of Caucasian uh, genetics, they, uh, they have always regarded color of skin as a barometer of where you stand in society or, you know, whether you're acceptable to society or not. And I, I don't know where it came from. There have been theories that, you know, the darker you are, the presumption is that you and your family have been working in the fields longer. Therefore, you are lower in the, um, in the uh, 
uh, totem pole of things. Uh, whatever the case is, there's always been this condescension towards what is dark, what is black. Um, you know, uh, there have been there have been throughout history references to the black uh, skin with the devils, but all of that is such bullshit, man. Come on. It, the only thing that black and white is, is where your genetic disposition has been constructed and whether you have more pigment on your skin in order to keep you from the harm of the sun. You know, the, the, because this, that's the, and that has over billions, billions of years of evolution, millions of years of evolution, hundreds of thousands of years of human evolution evolved to create genetic variations and and this diverse uh, panacea of of human beings. And, and that's, that's the only thing there is. That's the only thing there is. And that is less relevant today because people of all different colors live all different in all different parts of the world and that is uh, most most relevant in european countries with african populations and african americans uh and the black population and uh in the united states and the brown population uh, in the united states and the yellow population in the united states that's all there is that's all it is and 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 we in our uh you know sort of idle brains the only thing we can think of was that black is bad and nothing else. And we haven't been able to tear ourselves out of that, even after the Human Genome Project, even after understanding and realizing that there's nothing, no correlation between inferiority and superiority. Uh, when it comes to the color of skin, there's no, uh, there's no difference when it comes to, under, uh, to, to uh, the capacity of uh, different races. Uh, it, it is entirely constructed. It, it is entirely constructed by a very limited brain of um, a very limited amount of people who are in power, who want to stay in power, who want to remain rich, who want, who continue to want to suppress this idea um, of equality, of egalitarianism, of meritocracy. Um, and I'm not blaming all the rich people, you know, and you might hate me for saying this, but one of the rich people that I may admire uh, is Michael Bloomberg, uh, who I don't know if he'll be the, uh, the nominee for the Democratic Party. And I'm not going to hope whether he is or not. I'm going to vote for anybody who is running against Trump. But he's self-made and he's putting money, you know, with his where his mouth is and he's doing the work. And, uh, you know, recently there was some controversy about him being uh, condescending towards women and uh, sexually um, improper. And I haven't looked more into it, and I will if he becomes more relevant to us as a people. But let me get back to the money people and their connection to, the, uh, to keeping, keeping this dialogue of black is bad and black is bad and black is evil and black is inferior in the back of our minds, somewhere in this, uh, this part of our minds. So it can be readily exploited by the people who are most vulnerable to that debate, to uh, most insecure with, their, with themselves, most isolated from the larger world. Um, and that is what rural America has become. And that is what so many parts of this country has become where, uh, where ignorance flourishes, where, where the only uh, explanations are the very basic, instinctive, barbaric ones, but not the, not the more, more uh, logical, reasoned, uh, scientifically accurate ones. And, and that's where we are today. That's where we are today because we are lazy fucks because we decided we don't want to use our brains because we, we'd we rather just follow. And when there's no one left to follow, we'd rather just run out and off, into the, off the cliff. That's where we are. That's where we are in the world today. 
I hope I get 12 listeners. I have, I hope, I have maybe 13. And I hope more of you would subscribe as I rant on, because I think it's an important time that we have, um, we have found ourselves in, and I think we need to speak out. And to, we need to talk about what is what we as individuals from our brains find important, um, not for just ourselves, not just for ourselves. And that's what's important, not just for ourselves, but for the bigger picture, but for everybody from our sisters and our brothers to our friends and our friends, friends and our strangers and beggars on the street and homeless people and children who are desperately trying to find their parents again and children who are starving and all these people all these people every single time that we think about ourselves about our lives the decisions that we make we have to we have to think about these people we have to think about the circumstances we have to think about the animals of and we have to think about the plants we have to think about what's happening in the planet we think about the rising oceans and the rising towers of billionaires when poor people die of starvation. And this is a little bit darker of a second um, talk. Please subscribe. Please listen. Uh, please comment. Please critique. Please tell me I am not saying anything important. And when you say that, please, please explain to me why or how you think that what I'm saying is of no meaning. Uh, Today is the 31st of December, and I wish you all uh, an awakened new year, a year where you will be able to ask yourself, uh, ask yourselves the most crucial of questions about what you can do to make sure this world survives, uh, that our world survives because the planet will still be here we'll just not be here take care